So, if the graph uh, has uh, no negative cycle or uh, zero cycle, we know that the solution of this equation called Bellman equation is unique x v equal to minimum over all u v belonging to E of u plus rate of u v. It's a very interesting equation. I know that its a solution is what I want, but how do I go about solving this equation? This equation has got circular dependencies. We have already seen a small example. In fact, if the original graph has a kind of a cycle, the variables which are depending on in that uh, chain will display a cyclic dependency. If there is a cyclic dependency, the things get messy and then when you have large number of equation, you do not have any systematic procedure to uh, solve this set of equations. So, after doing all this uh, nice work, finally we have in our hand a system of equations which are difficult to solve or there is no known procedure available to uh, solve them. So, how do we circumvent this uh, situation? So, mathematicians have come up with a brilliant idea. Okay. The method that they, they approach they take whenever you see this kind of a non-linear and uh, complicated equations, they take an approach called iterative approach. This is also called as method of iterated improvements or method of successive approximations. These are all they all mean the same thing. Okay. So, what we do in an iterative approach is the following. We start with some tentative solution and we find a better solution. So, we will have a method that is going to improve in some sense the solution in our hand. So, we start with a solution, apply that method, get a better solution. Again apply the same method on the better one you got and you get much better one. So, in this way you keep improving the solutions. So, there is a basic method which will define the so called improvement step and that basic procedure is going to be repeatedly applied. So, you get a solution S yes, 0 from that you get a solution S yes, 1 and from that you get solution S yes, 2 and so on. Okay. Each is an improvement over the previous one. So, I am not directly solving it, I am defining a procedure that will slowly take me to the solution. Okay. So, I am taking a roundabout route. I do not have a direct computational procedure to uh, uh, solve the equation, but what I do is an iterative method, okay? a very clever uh, approach in numerical methods and in various uh, other branches of uh, mathematics we might have seen these kind of techniques. What is important for us is that the this process of improvement should quickly converge. In fact, ideally it should converge in finite number of steps and that finite number should also be small, so that we quickly reach the solution. 
the hope is that when you keep on improving it you get to reach the solution right this should converge to a solution all these things should happen in our context we are looking for the shortest path so what we can do is the following we start with some path do some computation and try to obtain a better path and again do the same kind of a computation on that path and obtain a still better path or a shorter path so in this way we may plan to obtain a series of paths one shorter than the previous one with the hope that this process leads to the shortest path this is called the method of iterated improvement brilliant idea but then identifying uh, in what way we can achieve the improvement and uh, how many iterations we require all these things are technical details and uh, we are going to take a look at uh, them now okay so one natural way to go towards uh, the solution is through what is known as bounded paths we will find it somewhat difficult to directly deal with paths so we will go through what is known as walks bounded walks but bounded walks and bounded paths are related and we use all of that and finally solve the problem okay it's a very high level description we are going to see the details now let wk v denote the set of all walks from s to v containing at most k edges here we have k greater than or equal to 0 okay set of all walks you can walk from s to v a series of edges end at v that series can have repetition and it can it's a walk after all okay so w k v is the set of all but k is a finite number therefore this set is a finite set w k v is a finite set it could be empty but it is a definitely finite because the number of edges you can have is bounded that is why these are called bounded walk you cannot have infinitely many edges here you can have only you are allowed to have only at most k edges because it is a finite set each walk has a weight there is a walk with minimum weight right let alpha k v denote the weight of shortest walk in w k v ok this is the weight of the shortest walk in w k v it is a number in our case it is an integer right what are the properties we can uh, observe about this first of all notice that w k v is a subset of w k plus 1 v ok why every path that has got at most k edges obviously will be in the set of walks that has got at most k plus 1 edges 
a walk that has got less than or equal to k edges is automatically a walk that has got less than or equal to k plus 1 edges. Okay? A walk with utmost k edges is automatically a walk with utmost k plus 1 edges. So, every walk here every walk in w k v will be a walk in w k plus 1 v. Every walk here is and w k plus 1 v may have some more walks because we may take a slightly around about and then reach v and thereby with k plus 1 edges there may be a walk in which case uh, this will be a superset. Otherwise, it will be equal or it is a superset. So, you have a set B and you have a superset A. What can you say about the minimum of these two? Suppose B is a set of numbers, A is a superset of numbers, okay? just numbers, B is a set of numbers and so minimum of A will be less than or equal to minimum of uh, B. Okay? You, you can put in this way also minimum of B is greater than or equal to minimum of That is because every element of B is an element of A. Therefore, the smallest element of B is also there in A. Minimum of A is smaller than everybody. So, it will be smaller than even minimum of B. That is all the simple logic, very simple logic. A superset of numbers probably will have a smaller minimum. It will have the same minimum or it may have a smaller minimum. Okay? Because of this, you immediately see that alpha k v is greater than or equal to alpha k plus 1 v. It is a minimum over a bigger set. A minimum over a bigger set may have a smaller minimum. That is the reason why this will be true. That means, we have a decreasing sequence of values. Okay? alpha 0 v is greater than or equal to alpha 1 v which is greater than or equal to alpha 2 v and so on. You have a decreasing sequence of values defined by this collection of sets. This is a hierarchy of set, it is a collection of set one containing other okay? w k. So, I have this set and then something larger and something and something bigger. So, in this way it keeps containing the previous ones. Therefore, the minimums will form a decreasing sequence. We are going to define for paths similar quantities. Okay? What are the let P K V is set of all P is a path from S to V with utmost k edges. Of course, k is greater than or equal to 0. So, here also we have the following P k v is a subset of p k plus 1 v because a path with less than or equal to k edges is automatically it has got less than or equal to k plus 1 edges. So, that path will be in the other set also. So, every element 
of p k v is an element of p k plus 1 v, p k plus 1 v may have additional paths right. So, it is a hierarchy of set one containing the previous one. Now, we are going to define delta k v equal to the weight of shortest path in p k v. p k v is a finite set each path in p k v has got a weight therefore, there is a shortest path minimum weight that minimum weight is delta k v that minimum weight is actually delta k v. The alpha sequence can be an infinite sequence, but the delta sequence is a finite sequence delta 0 v is greater than or equal to delta 1 v greater than or equal to greater than or equal to delta n minus 1 v and there it stops after that everything will be equal delta n v is equal to delta n plus 1 v and so on. This is not an infinite sequence it stops at n minus 1 you can define, but all of them will be equal to delta n minus 1 only it would not decrease any further why it is a path any path even the longest path cannot have more than n minus 1 edges in a path no vertex and no edge can be repeated therefore the maximum the maximum number of edges in any path in a graph with vertex set of size n suppose vertex set has got n vertices what is the longest path n minus 1 any path you take from anywhere to anywhere it cannot have more than n minus 1 edges ok. The maximum number of any path is n minus 1 that means every path is going to have less than or equal to n minus 1 edges what does this mean every path will have only less than or equal to n minus 1 edges. So, p n minus 1 v is set of all paths this is set of all paths from s to v this is set of all paths from s to v. The minimum weight in that is the shortest path from S to V. Therefore, delta n minus 1 V is in fact delta V. You are finding the minimum over all paths and that is the shortest path. Okay. Therefore, delta V is delta n minus 1 V what can you say about delta n v set of all paths with less than or equal to n edges this is same as because this itself contains all paths it cannot have any superset. So, all higher numbered indices are going to define the same uh, set of paths ok because p n minus 1 v itself captures all paths ok. So, for example, from S to V this is a path of length 1, this is a path of length 3 ok. If there is a path like this one, two, one, two, three, four, five, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a path of length 6. So, you have various paths of various lengths, number of edges, but none of them can have more than n minus 1. That is the reason why you have delta 0 v greater than or equal to delta 1 v. This can so, this a path you have a shortest path among P 1, shortest path among P 2, shortest among P 2, but shortest among P n minus 1 is the shortest path delta n minus 1 v which is equal to delta v and this is equal to delta n v, this is equal to delta n plus 1 v and so on. So, the sequence becomes stationary here. So, you are going to when you are going to consider the shortest paths in these sets their lengths become shorter and shorter initially you have this then you have a better path and you have. So, find the shortest path in P 1 using this find the shortest path in P 2 using that find the shortest path in P 3 in this way when you go you get shorter and shorter path after n minus 1 stages you have the shortest path in your hand method of iterated improvement ok. Therefore, we have a high level plan where we are going to keep finding the shortest paths in this collection which keeps giving us better and better paths. There is a minor technicality here we will have some difficulty in working with the collection of paths, but we can work comfortably in the collection of walks. We can work in the collection of walks easily, but working in the collection of paths is a bit tricky. We will see why we have introduced uh, the alphas and deltas. Our goal is to find delta v which means our goal is to find delta n minus 1, but we are going to find delta n minus 1 uh, not via delta 0, delta 1, delta 2, but via alpha 0, alpha 1 and so on and then relate these two and get to our solution. Okay? We will see the details of uh, these in our next session. Thank you.